Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the bright side. We want to be your go-to resource for all things health and nutrition. I've been in the health and nutrition business for decades as a pharmacist, as a nutritionist, as a chemist, as a researcher, as a therapist. And if I've learned one thing, it is that there is not one single chronic degenerative disease that you can deal with, that you can name that is not possible to deal with. I'm not talking cure here. I'm not talking magic. I'm talking simply reversal. No matter what your chronic degenerative disease is, you do not have to suffer. If you understand just a few little tiny basic building block ideas, it is not complicated to get healthy. Now, depending on how far, how far along you are, how progressed you are, you're going to get better if you're, you're going to get better uh, more significantly if you're not as progressed, of course. But the good news is, is that the more progressed your disease state is, the faster you're going to notice results. Yeah, it may take you longer if you've been dealing with a degenerative illness for decades, but, and many people have multiple degenerative illnesses. I hope to get to a letter today uh, that I've been, um, an email that I've been, uh, I've been emailing and communicating with a, a gentleman whose wife is a nurse and she's dealing with a chronic degenerative disease that is horrific and she's only 37 years old. We hope to get to this letter here later today in our second segment. Anyway, 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about any health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with or if you have questions about something you may have heard about or read about or just a comment or success story, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If uh, you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the Bright Side, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. So we have been talking about fats, which are the storage form of energy that allows the body and its 100 trillion cells to perform their essentially infinite number of activities that are occurring every second. It is essentially infinite, the amount of activity that goes on inside the body. If you shrink down to the molecular level and all this is, is largely anyway, the, uh, the energy to perform all of these functions is largely derived from fats. But of course, in order for fats to work, to do their energy or to provide their energy, I should say, they have to be ingested. They have to be digested. They have to be assimilated. They have to go into the blood. They got to go into the cells and then they got to go inside the cells and then They've got to go into these very incredibly specialized structures, these tiny little amazingly complicated subcellular structures, a cell within a cell. Yes. And there's thousands, hundreds to thousands of these things in cells. They're called mitochondria. Just think about that for a second. You've got a cell within a cell, they have this little mitochondria of which you have hundreds to thousands inside a cell has its own DNA, it has its own RNA, 
it is almost essentially it is another cell basically it is another cell in fact biologists now believe evolutionary biologists believe that it used to be a bacteria that kind of inserted itself into our cell and its job is to help the cell deal with oxygen to help the cell deal with oxygen uh, in terms of getting energy most importantly in terms of it allows the cell to utilize oxygen in terms of energy and uh, it also acts as a uh, as a uh, source of the body's energy currency, which is called ATP. It's amazingly, amazingly important, and it's the ultimate destination for dietary fats, along with the cell membrane and also fat cells. It's one of the destinations of dietary fats. Uh, the stored electrical energy that's trapped in what we call fats is somehow transformed to electrical energy by the action of the mitochondria. And, and what is it inside the mitochondria? Okay, this is so important what I'm going to say now. We're always talking about fat soluble. We've been talking about fats, vitamins D, E, A, and K. So you say, well, what about the water soluble vitamins? How do they play a role? Well, guess what? The water soluble vitamins act as energy transfer systems inside the mitochondria. That is your B vitamins and your vitamin C and your electrolytes. You could probably throw in coenzyme Q10 in there. These are water soluble substances that act to provide the machinery, and it's like a machine to turn fats into energy. So fats are, fats are obviously important. We've been talking about them, but it's the B vitamins and vitamin C and coenzyme Q10, and we're going to talk about all these, that are responsible for turning the fat into energy. Mitochondria, you're going to hear more and more about mitochondria. Mitochondria health is kind of becoming a, a fashionable focus for, for the alternative healthcare world, for the doctor healthcare world. According to Dr. Rocco Motto, or Monto, writing in this very interesting book called The Fountain, A Doctor's Prescription to Make 60 the New 30. He's still, it's still kind of medical, I suppose, but he does talk about supplements. But anyway, he talks about mitochondria here. He says, uh, billions of mitochondria could fit on a grain of sand. That's amazing right there. Billions of them can fit on a grain of sand. Mitochondria, by the way, means tiny thread. Look, because they look like tiny threads under a microscope. And if you're confused about the mitochondria or how it works, and, and I'm not going to get into, it's mind blowing. It's called electron transport. That's all I'm going to say about it. And that's how energy is produced in the mitochondria. And it is absolutely ridiculously mind blowing. I'm not going to get into it, but it's amazing, amazing stuff. And it should be, you know, if you're even a little interested in health or the body, it should be quite fascinating how, how the heck this all happens, how energy is made. Nonetheless, I'm not going to really get into that, Although, except to say, if you're interested, look up electron transport. But if you want to simplify the whole concept of the mitochondria, think of your thyroid. Thyroid health and mitochondrial health go hand in hand. The thyroid does its work via the mitochondria. If your mitochondria are not performing, it's probably, uh, there's a good chance that there's a thyroid problem that's involved. Thyroid hormone amps up the mitochondria. And hypothyroidism poorly functioning thyroid, which is like an epidemic. I would say the vast majority of adults over, say, the age of 40 or 50 are dealing with some degree of hypothyroidism. And if you're sick, guaranteed 100%, you are definitely dealing with hypothyroidism. And you don't need a test. Those hypothyroid tests are ridiculous. You don't need a test to see how bad your thyroid's functioning. Look at your body. Feel your body. Sense your body, your hair, your nails, your skin. Your digestive system. A good healthcare professional should not need to have a thyroid test to know if there's a thyroid problem. If you're sick, you got a thyroid problem, period. The thyroid also regulates nourishment. It regulates the digestive system. It regulates the fat digestive system. And we've been talking about how important fats are for the mitochondria. So you're, you can pretty much rest assured that if, you have a, if you're sick, you got a thyroid problem slash mitochondrial problem. And... If you have a thyroid problem, you're probably gonna, it's probably going to uh, tumble into a downward spiral because the thyroid also has to feed the mitochondria. In other words, what I'm saying here is if you want to work on your mitochondria, work on your thyroid. Not surprisingly, by the way, blood fats and cholesterol accumulate and fat storage accumulates when we're hypothyroid. Hypothyroidism and fat issues, fat digestion issues go hand in hand. Hypothyroidism can suppress the machinery, that all important machinery that we've been talking about that is involved with fat digestion. 
particularly at the, particularly at the level of the gallbladder, which we will talk about here when we come back from our break. I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. The Bright Side. I'm Farm Spen. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. We've got videos and blog posts and news stories at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And uh, got all the longevity products up as well. And a join the team now link that you can click on if you want to start a longevity business, if you want to help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you're, if you're a healthcare professional, it's an ideal business for anybody who is um, seeing patients for a living, or if you just like the health business and you've always wanted to be in the health business. I know a lot of folks are like that. If you've, uh, if you're health conscious yourself, help spread the word, help pay, pay it forward, especially if you benefit from the longevity supplements. I know so many of you have just to be on Tangy Tangerine. Not a week goes by when I don't talk to somebody who's told me, who tells me about the beyond Tangy Tangerine. And, and it's not always people who know anything about nutrition. A lot of times it's people who don't supplement or who, who don't do other supplements. They just do the beyond Tangy Tangerine. And you can, you can build a nice little business just by selling the beyond Tangy Tangerine. And of course it sells itself. If you're interested for a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business for yourself. Call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, or click on the Join the Team link, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Our number is 844-236-6010. Got lines open at 844-236-6010. We're talking about the relationship between the thyroid and disease and the thyroid and fat malabsorption and and fat problems in general hyper too much cholesterol and hypothyroidism go hand in hand fyi if you're on a statin drug this is well, this is the stupid this is one of the major reasons why i'm just i'm a pharmacist that hates these kinds of drugs and i say these kinds of drugs because there are some drugs like pain pills and antibiotics that you may want to consider using if you're having a serious infection or if you're about to have a serious infection or, or you're in severe pain, but the kind of drugs they give you for long term to reduce risks, they're just awful. And this is a classic example of why. If you have hypercholesterolemia, you've got a meta, that means too much cholesterol in the blood, I should say. You get too much cholesterol to the point where they want to poison your cholesterol making machinery, there's some chemistry issues that need to be addressed. And one of the first things is figure out what's going on with your thyroid. Millions of people with thyroid, hypothyroidism have issues with the fat processing system in the body, especially the gallbladder. Gallbladder disease and hypothyroidism go hand in hand. If you, have, if you are suffering from hypothyroidism, and again, if you have a chronic degenerative disease, the chances are very good. Your thyroid's not functioning as well as it should. If you have a chronic degenerative disease or you have a gallbladder problem, focus on the thyroid, which means focus on the blood sugar, which means focus on stress hormone, cortisol, as well as estrogen. And ultimately, it means focusing on the digestive system. Remember, it's a downward spiral because the messed up thyroid messes up fat absorption, messed up fat absorption, messes up the thyroid, which messes up fat absorption, and it just keeps going downward. This fat busting machinery, this fat processing machinery has to be taken very, very seriously. And I'm telling you, there's not a single chronic degenerative disease that does not have some connection to impaired fat absorption. Take that to the bank. There's not a single chronic degenerative disease that cannot be improved by focusing on fat absorption. Ultimate enzymes, lecithin, bile salts, probiotics, apple cider vinegar, fiber, Chewing your food, thinking about your food, betaine HCL or uh, HCL drops. Just a few ways, a few supplements, I should say, diet aids that you, can, that you should be using if you have a chronic degenerative disease. So I've been emailing with this guy, and uh, his, his uh, wife is a nurse, and she's dealing with something called Wegner's disease. Or now, actually, it's called Wegner's granulomatosis, technically GPA. And you check this mouthful out. 
granulomatosis, polyangitis. It's like two things that come together. And if you can't pronounce them or you're intimidated by these terms, you're not alone. I'm intimidated by these terms. I have a hard time pronouncing them. Granulomatosis and polyangitis. This is how doctors diagnose diseases, and you, we, we end up thinking we have a disease. Granulomatosis and polyangitis is just inflammation, period. They give you a disease. It's called inflammation, except it's fancy Latin. And the infl inflammation, instead of saying inflammation, they say granuloma, which is an inflammatory chemical. You've got lots of granulomas. Granulomatosis, it's an inflammatory complex. And polyangitis. You've got, got lots of inflammation in the blood vessels. That's what angitis is, polymeny. Angitis is blood vessel inflammation. It's just inflammation. And because the, the inflammation is occurring in the, at the level of the blood vessel, it's basically a connective tissue disease. It is a connective tissue disease. And this gal's a nurse, right? Okay. Here's, she says, this is from her husband. My wife, who is a nurse, has been diagnosed with Hashimoto's, okay, hypothyroidism, Ehlers Danlos, which is a connective tissue disease, and now Wegner's, another connective tissue disease. She has a history of renal failure, that's kidney disease, stroke, and now a busted artery, which resulted in an emergency surgery. Her doctors, I cannot figure out what is going through their brain. She's on typical drugs to treat said illness, and here, also here of late, she's been eating a ketogenic diet with hopes of keeping that in remission. Okay, that's great, but you need way more than a ketogenic diet. Oh, here's the kicker. She's 37 and scared to death, and rightly so. All right? This is a gal who can be helped immediately. Instantaneously, she can be helped. She can notice benefit. Uh, she can notice improvement in her condition instantaneously. Now, obviously, with all these things going on, it's going to take a while to, to reverse everything, but the reversal process can begin immediately. And if you listen to the first 10 minutes of this program, you know what I'm going to say. Work on fat absorption. Work on the digestive system. First and foremost. And I would love to talk to this gal's doctors on the air to explain to them how the body works and how you can address this thing without drugs. There's no drugs that are going to help this condition. And I, I, I would ask her, with all of this stuff, she's, presumably she's been on drugs for a long time. Has it, have they helped? No, this is a gal who's deteriorating, de deteriorating rapidly. Now, here's the thing. The faster, uh, the more deteriorated you are, the faster your body's breaking down, the easier it is to begin the turnaround process, which is such great news for this gal. Now, I, I have to say, I don't have this, I, I can't find the rest of this letter here, but there was a, an implication on one of these back and forth correspondences that I've been having with her husband that she believes the medical model, that she is 37 years old and she probably went to nursing school and got, got uh, brainwashed and propagandized about the importance and the, how wonderful the medical model is. The medical model loves telling itself, it, its new students, how wonderful it is. The medical model loves telling everybody how wonderful it is, but yet you have 37-year-old people who have these deter degenerative diseases that are just rotting, that are just basically rotting. And by the way, doctors say there's no known cause for granulomatosis and polyangitis. That's the standard uh, medical dogma. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We've got lots of lines open for you. Eight four four two three six sixty ten. I want to finish up talking about this gal and uh, give her some tips. Hopefully she's listening, or perhaps you're listening on the archives. Um, I'm going to give you some tips, and this is true for all health challenges that involve the connective tissue. And, and by the way, Wegner's disease, Wegner's granulomatosis, GPA, granulomatosis with polyangitis is a connective tissue disease. Doctors have something they call mixed connective tissue disease, which I find amusing. It just basically means your body's falling apart. Mixed connective dish, tissue disease is MBFA disease. My body is falling apart disease, pretty much. The connective tissue is the great dumping ground of blood toxins.
toxins. The connective tissue represents one of the ways the body eliminates blood toxicity. And so the blood will just dump toxins off into the connective tissue to stash them away. Like a kid throwing, cleaning up his room by putting his, all, the, all the crap all over his room under his bed. It's the same idea. The, the body will stash that stuff out of the blood in the connective tissue. The connective tissue then becomes distorted. The body attacks it. Thus, you have your Wegener's disease. Wegener's disease, polyangitis, mixed connective tissue disease, scleroderma, lupus, whatever flavor you want to call it. doesn't matter where, it's, where it is. That's irrelevant if, if, as far as healing the body goes. It's not irrelevant as far as your symptoms, obviously. So doctors will treat the area they see the disease occurring in, but it's happening everywhere. So what do you do? Well, first you work on the gut. If you just do that, you're going to notice dramatic benefits. If you could fast for a week, you'd notice dramatic benefits. Now, most people can't do that, but at least start paying attention to how you eat and what you eat. I'm telling you, if you're listening, ma'am, or anybody out there who's got a condition like this, I'm guaranteeing you not not with 99.9% .9 certitude, with 100.0000% certitude, I'll bet my house, that you have a digestive problem that's severe, and you've had it for a while if you're only 37. There's no way, absolutely no way you cannot tell me that you don't have some kind of constipation, gas, bloating, problems with foods. So work on that first. And by the way, the steroid drugs you're taking are just going to make matters worse. And if you're on antibiotics, and a lot of times they give you antibiotics for these things, that's going to make matters further worse. Work on your gut. Get on a Swero V cleanse. Use your ultimate enzymes. Find the best probiotic you can, starting with the ultimate nightly essence. And eat fermented foods. Fast. Reduce your calories. Stay away from anything that messes up your gut, including but not only gluten. Including but not only gluten. Gluten gets all the press, but there's lots of things that are problems in plants, and there's lots of things that are problems in foods. At the age of 37, you should not, you do not have the luxury, if you're falling apart like to this extent, you do not have the luxury of eating normally. And by normal, I'm saying standard American diet-wise. And I'm not saying, I, I'm not judging anybody for how they eat. And it's great you're on ketogenic, this gal's doing the ketogenic diet, that's great. But you can do the ketogenic diet and still have problems. A lot of ketogenic-friendly foods are not good foods, especially the processed foods, the, the bars, the keto bars, the ketogenic bars. All right, so I didn't want to get on my high horse there, but it just breaks my heart. It's really tragic. And she's representative of the, med of the medical model. And the good news is, is when you start to use these strategies to uh, reverse your disease state that I've been talking about, not only are you going to improve your life, but when you see how amazing it works, you're not then going to be a spokesperson. You're going to be an evangelist, a good angel helping spread the word. That's why I thought this story was so important or this letter was so important is because anybody who follows my program, this program, I don't say my program, but the program that I've been talking about here, that I talk about every day, focusing on the gut, focusing on fat absorption, using supplements, anybody who, who, who employs this program, this protocol, who's dealing with a chronic degenerative disease, guaranteed will get better. Guarantee. All right, 844 is our number. Hang tight. If you're on hold, we do have lines open for you. We'll get to you here momentarily. From... Uh, NutraIngredients.com. This is a kind of interesting story from research from the University of Alberta. Poop pills prove productive in preventing infection, say professors. It's a very creative headline writer there. Poop pills prove productive in preventing C. diff infection. C. diff is a, a particularly nasty bacteria that can cause all kinds of gastrointestinal problems. And it turns out that when you dehydrate human feces until only the bacteria remain, you dehydrate it and, and detoxify it, I suppose, and then you encapsulate those bacteria that are concentrated in the human feces, yes, in a gelatin capsule, you, uh, you actually can improve dental health, or you can improve uh, physical well-being. This is uh, actually uh, done at the uh, University of Alberta Medicine and Dentistry School. Quote, according to Dr. Dina Cow. They are non-invasive, these poop pills, that is. They're less expensive than colonoscopies, and they don't have the risk associated with sedation, and they can be administered in a doctor's office, and they're easier for patients and well-tolerated. Hmm. Well, that's kind of interesting. Fecal transplants are a thing, if you haven't heard about them yet. 
this whole thing about gut bacteria is so amazing to me because when I was in pharmacy school, it was just hinted at. But we didn't really know anything about gut bacteria until the 1990s. And it goes to show you how a lot of our understanding of the body really, it's really only about 20, 25, 30 years old, 40 years old. But if you go to a dermatologist or you go to a doctor, you're going to likely get the same type of medicine you got in 1920, especially a dermatologist. All right, let's see. This is from, we'll do one more here, and then uh, we'll get your calls. 844-236-6010. Rare but serious genital infections, as well as one death, have been reported in some patients taking a certain type of diabetes drug. This is a diabetes drug called an SGLT2 inhibitor. You may have heard of them. Farsiga is the most famous one. Steglatro, that's another one. Zyduo, they got up, there's, a, there's probably about 10 of them, Jardians. I think Jardians is the big one. Jardians and Farsiga are probably the two big ones. You see commercial for them all the time. Well, now they've been associated with something called Fournier's gangrene, which is not a good thing. It's a bacterial infection of the genitals and the area of the genitals. Basically, it's flesh-eating bacteria, necrotizing fasciitis. It's a flesh-eating bacteria. And you don't want gangrene anywhere near that area. But apparently, if you take Farsiga and and uh, Jardians, according to the F FDA, you will have a greater likelihood of getting this horrible disease. Now, that's not to say that everybody who takes a drug is going to have a side effect, but it is to say that you're playing with fire when you take prescription drugs. And even if you, even if you don't get something blatant like necrotizing fasciitis or flesh-eating bacteria, there's all kinds of problems that are associated with drugs as side effects and as hidden side effects caused by nutritional deficiencies and toxicity. That's why I always say, if you're on a prescription drug and you're on it long term, the number one, your number one health goal should be to figure out how to wean yourself off of that prescription drug. That's why we are here. On the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to take a commercial break. If you're on hold, we will get to you as soon as we come back from our break. We do have lines open, 844-236-6010. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Got more good health information coming at you right after this. Don't go away. Side 844236 6010. 844236 6010 is our number, and we do have lines open. Let's go to Florida and say good morning to Shirley. What's up, Shirley? How you doing? Shirley, Shirley, Shirley. We have Shirley. Okay, I'm gonna put you back on hold here, Shirley. Are you there? Uh, I don't know what you're doing there, Shirley. I can I can't really hear you. Uh, can you get to the, I'll give you a couple seconds to get to the phone. Okay. I'm, Shirley, I, I can't really understand, I can't understand what you're saying. Are you on a regular phone there, Shirley? All right. Uh, call me on a regular phone and I'll, I'll get you on the call here. I can't really understand what Shirley was saying there. Uh, Cliff in Canada. What's up, Cliff? How you doing? Not too bad, sir. I went to, I uh, was listening to your show. You had some lady talking about uh, eye problems that I met and floaters, and I asked you about it, uh, about the dangers of them. And so what I did was I had a feeling, so I went to the optometrist, and I had my eyes checked. And then, uh, like uh, she said, I had cataracts, too. Oh, but how old are you? I'm like 60. I'm going to be 62 at the end of the month. And then, listen, it's not over. Then I had a bad feeling. It was like, you know, I believe in God, right? And so many things were happening that were like, you know, like my friends were telling me about detachments and everything. So I went to the Eye Institute, and lo and behold, I, I have a benign posterior vitreous detachment. And oh, wow. You go back in, uh, what is it, on October the 9th. They say that I, they just got to watch me 
but chances are everything's okay. But what do I do? And they, they say basically uh, the optometrist says that maybe I'll need like an operation, like cataract operation, maybe later on, you know. And uh, you want to do everything you could do to avoid that. The vitreous, the vitreous is like the, the jelly that fills the inside of your eyeball. Yes, okay. Sir. And when it shrinks or yeah. dehydrates, it yeah. starts to deteriorate and break down. Yeah. and maybe even become fibrotic, it starts to pull away from the retina. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So basically, your bo- you're just, your body's deteriorating. You know, that's Absolutely. basically what it is. And it ma- makes sense that it would happen in the eye, the eye being very delicate, a very delicate area. Now, I, fa- I vaguely remember tell- you telling me that you were on meds, or are you on meds, or were you on meds? Yeah, well, I was on meds, uh, like maybe 20 milligrams of olanzapine a day for years. And they- You're not on any now? Uh, 1.25 milligrams uh, per day, and I'm weaning myself off even of that. Like Good, you uh, should, because 62 uh, is a little young to be dealing with this kind of stuff. And yeah, understand, well, my, my understand that when you... Go, go ahead. My mother has macular degeneration. And, well, and it she, doesn't really run in the family. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, go there, but it's not like okay. it runs in the family. Your body, both your bodies are just deteriorating. Now, here's yeah. the thing. Um, yeah. You don't want to have surgery unless you have, it's a last resort. Even just ordinary cataract surgery can be a problem. So you yeah. just want, you want to avoid it. And what you want to start doing is building your body up again. Uh, wow. There's a lot of supplements you could take, and then there's a the whole digestive thing that we talked about. But it's basically, yeah. it's not like you want to focus on the vitreous detachment or in the eye. You know, it, that's just more like a, like a sign, a symptom. A, you can yeah. use it as a diagnostic tool so that when it improves, when the floaters improve, when your eye health improves, you'll know you're on the right track, basically. So okay. first of all, I'd be doing all the connective tissue building. I, anything you do to build connective tissue. The vitreous is made up largely of hyaluronic acid. You've yeah. heard of that term, right? So f- anything you could do to build hyaluronic acid and to use hyaluronic acid, bone broth, bone broth soup, cartilage containing products, hyaluronic acid supplements, glucosamine supplements, the glucogel caps, get on my collagen recovery complex, which you can get at truthtreatments.com. Hey, um, yeah. Vitamin That's, C, zinc. Yeah. These are all nutrients yeah. for building the connective tissue and supporting hyaluronic acid. So that's kind of how you want to look at this thing. Your body is just shriveling. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I think like I've been, I think this is a result of us. Uh, could it be a result of stress? Yeah, of course. Uh, Everything is stress. That's kind of a generic word. Everything. That's like saying, is it, can it be, can it be a result of air? Well, yeah, everything is air. Stress is everywhere. Everything's stress. Yeah. I had a lot of stress at work in the last couple of years. That's, that's well, why but there's also physiologic stress. You know, don't get it. You're a smart guy. Don't get into that a common mistake that people make when they hear the word stress. They immediately think psychological stress, which of course is a factor, and emotional stress. But there's physiologic stress. There's malnourishment is a physiologic stress. There's food processing uh, or, or processing foods that are artificial. Yeah. That's a physiologic stress. Inflammation is a physiologic, physiologic stress. Low blood oxygen is a physiologic stress. Blood sugar is a physiologic stress. You, you follow me? There's all these physiologic stresses that, yes, it's true. Your psychology is important, spirituality, emotion, all those are important. Mental thoughts, your thoughts you think. But there's also the purely physiologic stresses, and everything involves that. So, you know, when stress hormone goes up, cortisol, we don't grow. We don't heal. Our bones yeah. dissolve, our, our vitreous dissolves, everything dissolves under the regulation of long, long-term long stimulation of cortisol. All right, I want to get Shirley back on. She's uh, She had a bad connection. Are, are we good, Cliff? Anything else you want to ask? Yes, sir. Yeah, I really appreciate your help, sir. I really, I really do. All right. Yeah. All right, have a great day, Cliff. Good luck with everything. All right, let's go to Shirley, see if we get uh, Shirley on the line here. Hi. Are you there? Hey, Shirley. Yes. There you are. Hey. Um, I'm going to try not to bore you and make this sweet and, and short, but I just discovered you, and you're just amazing. But I, um, I a couple years ago, got I, I'm like always been super, super healthy, don't drink, don't smoke, all that. And I got diverticulitis. Well, that wasn't the worst thing. The worst thing was the doctor gave me three rounds of antibiotics for it. Ooh, ooh. Kept getting sicker and sicker. Oh, yes. I kept getting thinner and thinner. And eventually, I'm so serious, I hit the ground. My mouth was twisted. I wound up in Mayo Clinic, and what, what, what they had five doctors working to finally tell me that what happened was it ate up all my good bacteria, and I wasn't receiving any nutrients for almost a year. 
It ate all my muscle and fat, even in my face. It was like wearing a mask. Everything. Just I would say you have. Big, I mean, that's that's probably true. All that, but I think there's something else going on. I don't. That uh, that's a dramatic deterioration. When it's when it's that dramatic, there's something else going on. Yes, it's absolutely the case that you killed off a lot of your good bacteria, and you're probably going to suffer from malnourishment issues. And well, that's what and, they said. It was malnourishment. That's yeah, no, you're said, definitely yeah. going to have that issue, but it wouldn't go that fast. It wouldn't tumble out of control like the way you're describing it. There's something else happening there. Well, it took it took about I, I'd say it took about six months. I shouldn't. That I just kept getting thinner and thinner and no, thinner. No, there's and something I, else happening. Surely there's something well, else happening. Well, you know happening. what? I've come back though now. It's been like two years, and I'm I'm back to my normal weight. Okay. Um, and I'm exercising, and I and I've I've always tried to eat as, as healthy as I can anyway. But so you you took care of it yourself? From, Did you? Hang on, me. Shirley. Yeah, I just Did you kept eat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. Did you take care of it yourself? Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yeah. Yeah. I just kept praying about it, believe it or not, and just kept eating, trying to eat right and get myself back. It's been, I mean, emotional. It's just been terrible because I always looked really good. And it's like, I don't look like myself. It's how, how old are you? To get, how old, how old are you? I'm 62. Okay. But, um, are you still, you know, are you still thin? Done. Are you still thin? And, yeah. And, I, I weigh about 100. I'm 5'2 and I weigh 124, which is what I've always weighed before. That's not bad. I got sick and went down to 110. It so, sounds like you're doing great. So what do you, how can I help great, you? But, well, the, I'm trying to figure out my face. You know, I lost all my muscle and fat in my face, which is like the platform that your skin sits on. Yeah. It affected my skin because I understand, that, you know, when you get sick, it goes through your skin first. How, I've got some filler in there, but how do I get back? How, how, how do you do get I back? Get well, back? you can't target the skin, but you can target the connective tissue. And that's what I would be doing. Okay. I'd be doing any, everything you could do to build collagen. It's, it's almost impossible. I don't even see how it could possibly be possible, how it could be possible for it just to be in your skin and not in your blood vessels or your bones or your other connective tissue because the connective tissue is a system. So just build that connective tissue. Get yourself on bone broth and bone broth protein. Those are two different things. Oh. So make bone okay. soup, I call it. A chicken soup with the bones, or you can get bone. I do you can, that. Okay, lots of it all day long. Okay. Uh, and then also bone broth protein, which you can get at a health food store uh, or at yeah, Brightside Health. That, but go ahead. Bone broth protein. Yeah, that's good. And do it every day. Uh, also, glucosamine, hyaluronic acid, okay. vitamin C, okay. zinc. Okay. I'm going to assume that your digestive system is working because you got to. If it's not what you take, it's what you absorb. So I'm going to assume that your digestive system is working well. Um, well, but I if it's not, you got to focus good. on that too. Aloe vera, okay. uh, start doing okay, aloe vera do every day. Uh, and, uh, anything you could do to build connective tissue. That's what I'd be doing. Uh, organ meats, eggs, whey protein, okay. weightlifting. It's a whole bunch of things you could do. Listen, I'm out of time, Shirley. If you want to send an email, Thanks, send Rob. it to ben at, ben you. At Focus on, focus on your connective tissue is, uh, that's the bottom line. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate it. And thank you for listening to the bright side friends. I'm pharmacist Ben. Our website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products and truth treatments.com for the best skincare you will ever use. Truth treatments.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We will talk to y'all later. Bye for now. Thank you.